I have this bedside table touch lamp and it's quite neat. You just touch the base and it gives one brightness, you touch it again, it's more brightness and you touch it again and it's the full brightness. And I really like it. The only trouble with it is it's not compatible with LED lamps. It has a tungsten filament. You need to use tungsten filament lamps because the dimming circuit inside goes crazy when you put an LED lamp in it. I never really use the dimming function because I just want to touch it once. And when you're sleeping at night time and you're touching it, and then to turn it off, you have to touch it like three times and it, it's distracting for the other person that's sleeping next to you. So just simple on off would be way better. So we're going to change the um, the touch module inside for just a simple on off and no dim function. So in the base of this lamp, uh, there's one of these uh, touch modules and the base is actually attached to this um, little ring here and um, if you touch it, it goes through three dim levels it's uh, sort of low brightness, medium brightness and high brightness and then back off again I don't want this dim function, it's not compatible with my LEDs so I'm having to use a um, tungsten filament lamp inside which wastes energy and everything's gone LED nowadays so it's a simple on off version is fine the dimming function is extremely irritating when you're sleeping and you turn it on and you have to go through a brighter and brighter setting waking up the person next to you each time you want to try and turn it off so on off is all we want so that's what we're going to do pop one of these inside and take the old one out so what we can do is try and take a shimming tool and uh, work our way around just to peel the adhesive away a bit of glue on it afterwards if we need to there I see a Phillips screw right that's the cover off there's our old touch module we can stick this one in its place So I think what we need to do is this whole debauchery of a connection here. We're going to have to open that up and replace. So let's get cracking. We could just put a terminal block in I suppose. Or solder them. I haven't quite decided yet. I think we should just uh, clip them. It's the easiest. Now, this terminal needs to go over the top of that. I'm going to be lazy and just chop it and solder it onto there. Just less disassembling work. Looks like this should fit in there easily. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, we'll just solder onto there. So we'll just finish stripping the wires bare. And I'll, I'll use um, terminal blocks. Uh, so those of you who don't like soldering can just do it with a terminal block. Yeah, that is just a bit too tight. I'm just going to solder it on. It's much easier. We don't want to be spending too much time on that nut. job done. It doesn't have to be insulated because all of this is um, non-insulated so you meant to touch that bit anyway. So let's common all the neutrals together. So the black in this case is the neutral.
as the neutrals common to the black, the white is the switch, switch live. Sorry, I went off shot there. So that's the lamp live, switch live out. Now the supply live in. Pull that back in, in a minute. Tighten them all good. You can pause and do a screen capture to see how the connections are made. Note how the yellow wire connects to the base metal of the lamp. So let's uh, let's put it together and um, let's see how it works with uh, an LED lamp. Now it's probably a, a good idea to put a little wrap of insulation tape around it. Strictly speaking, it's not necessary, but because it's enclosed. But we'll give it a token gesture of insulation tape. Nobody should be poking their fingers in here anyway. Right, that all looks in there now. Now we can take this lid and we can put the screws back. We'll pop a bit of glue on that later just to make it right. So there we go. Original touch lamp module been replaced. Let's try it with uh, my LED lamp. My LED. LED lamp. This is one I've modified. I've actually put a high and low setting on this one. I'll feature that later on in the video how I did that. Just because it's not a dimmable lamp, I've created my own dimming function. I just want it on off. But if I want a low setting for night time, I can, I'll leave it on the low setting for most of the time. So let's try that. So there you go. It's now fully compatible with LED lamps. Unfortunately, no dimming anymore because uh, this style dimmer that was in here is not compatible with LED lamps. But I've added a switch inside the bulb but if I really want a low setting for night time, I have a really soft light, so it doesn't disturb anybody. I would like to try and convert this um, LED bulb. There's only a, a 3 watt one, and this one was from Poundland. It's non-dimble, and I want to convert it into full on and a soft night glow mode. Um, so we're going to put a little switch in it, only a tiny little switch like this. We're going to put it in the top so that if you permanently want it on low glow, it just softly glows. So first so, thing we need to do is we need to we need to crack it open. So I think if we just slide along here, we should just pop it open. So I think it's just friction fit. I oh know it's slightly glued in. Okay. So we just mount it there. What we got is we've got a the AC coming in. Um, it says FR. I presume there's a fuse on this line here or fusible resistor. Um, but it comes in um, and then it goes to this bridge rectifier here. And then after that, it, this um, chip here um, regulates the current. It's like a current, current, constant current regulating chip that rides the sine wave up and down. And... Uh, regulates the, the current of the LED so they don't get over current. Um, what we're going to do is just before the bridge rectifier, we're going to put a capacitor in line with one of the um, AC lines. Looks like the neutral will be the easiest one to do. So we're respectively going to put it between there and there, the one input of the bridge rectifier. So we're going to break that connection there. The easiest place to, to break it would be just 
just there. And then we can have the capacitor going between there and there. And I think what the switch would do is simply bridge out the capacitor. So when it bridges out the capacitor, it'll be on maximum. And when the switch is turned off, then um, the capacitor would be in line. And what the capacitor does, it acts as a um, volt dropping circuit. Um, so the capacitor will limit, as, as the, the LED lamp draws a load, on the AC side, uh, the capacitor has a type of AC resistance. Yeah, so it's a type of resistance. Um, you call it impedance um, for AC, impedance. But a normal resistor would drop the voltage and generate some heat. Um, but if you, if you use a capacitor, it doesn't do that. Um, it just drops the voltage without, without generating any heat. So it's, it's quite efficient way of, of um, dropping the voltage to uh, an LED bulb. And it's used in lots of cheap LED lamps without generating all that heat and wasting energy. So I think what we need to do, we need to break that connection there. Because this is a track that along, runs all the way to there. I don't want to break the track on the board because it's aluminium underneath and I don't want to short to the aluminium. So I think we can just carefully break this little link there. And with that, I think I'm just going to use the side cutters just to uh, nibble away at it. There we go. That seems to be nicely broken. So let's uh, put a little dot of solder on it. This is a 100 nanofarad capacitor, but you can use various sizes depending on the brightness you want. So that should now effectively limit the current um, to the LEDs. But what we want to do is we now want two wires connected across there to the switch. So I think what we can do is we can bend this up so that it doesn't interfere with the light coming out from the LEDs too much. Tack the switch across it quickly. Let's power it up. Right. We have to be careful because it's live. Right. So full brightness and dim mode. Now, of course, um, I need to unsolder the switch because uh, that's just the way it is. If you uh, need to plug the wires through this hole. Okay, I think that's going to work. Okay, so that's uh, that's soldered on. So hopefully this will click in nicely. The switch. Let's have a look. So that is our little switch on top of the bulb. So let's give that a test. Right, 
that should be our full brightness. That's dim. Now it doesn't look very different, but in, to me that's very bright and very dim. So that works. Here we have our little uh, dimmable lamp. So it's basically just for a very soft light or proper light so you can read. On the data sheet you can see the capacitor with the switch across it that I've connected in line with the neutral. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Let me know if uh, you want me to make any specific video or anything interesting to watch. Please like and subscribe, leave a comment and share. I'll see you next time.